In this video, we're going to learn more about local versus global manipulation and how to place our 3D cursor. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this next video in our Learning Blender Slow series, I want to talk a little bit more about local manipulation and also how we can move the 3D cursor around. Now, we've already learned a handful of techniques for things like scaling, rotating, and moving around things like vertices, edges, and faces, but we haven't really done that to the entire object. So I wanna talk a bit about that. I wanna understand more about the 3D cursor and some additional tips on ways in which we can do this. So to get started, the first thing I'm gonna do is just hide the light and the camera. You can also delete them if you want to. But for right now, what I wanna do is I wanna focus on this default cube that's here. The 3D cursor is right at the center along with that small orange dot, which is the origin. And as we've already learned, there are a handful of shortcut keys that can help us do things like move, rotate, and scale. You can also find them on these tools on the left-hand side for things like move, rotate, and scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about using these tools on this default cube, and then we're gonna learn a bit more about manipulating based on the cube itself and the 3D cursor. So to get started, you can use G on the keyboard as a shortcut key, or you can select move. When we select move, we have the axes and the planes displayed on screen. So we're gonna move this over to the right. And then we're gonna to change to rotate. Now rotate is R on the screen. And what we wanna do first is rotate about the X axis. So if you're using shortcut keys, you'll hit R on the keyboard, and then you'll hit X on the keyboard to rotate about X. So we're gonna rotate this just slightly and then we're gonna go back to our selection box. I do think it's important that we learn how to use these shortcut keys for at least the very basics for moving, rotating, and scaling our objects. That's gonna increase the speed at which you can model infinitely. Now, I do know that using shortcut keys is tough, especially when you're learning a new software. In Fusion 360, the UI is very user-friendly. It's very easy for us to find tools. In Blender, there is a lot to look at. There are plenty of different areas where we can really just get sucked in. And there are so many menus that it becomes a little bit difficult for us to really engage ourselves. So again, I wanna focus on making sure we understand where the tools are, but we need to get comfortable with using at least some of the shortcuts Otherwise, the process of modeling in Blender is going to take quite a long time. So again, right now we've used Move and Rotate located over here on the left-hand side. But now what I want to do is use those shortcut keys. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to scale this object up. I'm going to view this from my X and note that this thing is sort of rotated askew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and notice that we're scaling completely in all three directions. But really I wanna make this thing taller or longer. So if I hit Z on the keyboard, it's scaling, but you'll note that it's not scaling in Z relative to the object. Now what's happening is it's scaling in Z relative to our coordinate system. Now one way that we can get around this is by using a local transform. So I'm gonna hit escape on the keyboard and note that right now we're using a global transform. We have the option to use a local transform, and we also have some other options, things like normal, gimbal, view, and cursor. So these can all be very handy, and we're gonna focus on really just global and local. So if we hit local, then we hit scale, S on the keyboard, and then Z. Notice that my Z coordinate is now aligned with the object. This is allowing us to make it longer. So using the local option can be extremely handy. And just like everything else, there is a shortcut key. So the shortcut key for this is for us to hit S on the keyboard, hit Z to scale in Z, and if we hit Z again, it's gonna automatically align it to its local coordinate system. So you can see that this is much quicker than us going up here and setting it to local, because honestly, local might not be what you need for every selection. So understanding the keyboard shortcuts can be extremely handy. 
So again, if we want to scale it, we can hit S to scale. We can hit Y in the Y direction and Y again, and it'll change the alignment based on the object. Another thing that we should be mindful of is that we have the option to transform based on our bounding box center, which is that orange dot we see, but we also have it based on the 3D cursor. Now you might be wondering why that's important. Well, if we want to do something like rotate, you notice that R on the keyboard rotate is allowing us to rotate about that 3D cursor. And this can be important if we want to create an object or rotate an object about a specific point. I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard. And if we change this to bounding box center and we hit R to rotate, you can see that it's going about that orange point at the center of our object. But what if we wanna move the 3D cursor to the center of our object? Well, in order to do that, there's actually a shortcut key that we can use, but I wanna make sure that we understand where the option is. So with our object selected under the object menu, we have the option to set the origin. So when we go to set origin, notice that we have this geometry to origin, we have origin, and then we have all these other options, but this isn't really what we're after. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but if we want to set the 3D cursor to the center of our object, we actually have to go down to the snap menu. Now the snap menu is where we're gonna find this, and you can see here that we have selection to grid, selection to cursor, and we have this keep offset, selection to active, and then down at the bottom of the section, we have cursor to selected, cursor to wor world, cursor to grid, and so on. So if we wanna move that 3D cursor directly at the center of our box, we can do cursor to select it. So that places it directly at the middle of the volume of whatever our object is. So that can be very handy, especially if we wanna reset that pivot for any reason. Things like using it for snap or changing the transform pivot to a specific area. Now remember with the 3D cursor, we can hold down shift and we can right click. And that'll allow us to place it wherever we want. So if we wanna reset that, again, we go to object and snap, and then we can set the cursor to world origin to put it back there, or we can go into snap and we can set it to the active component or the selected component or wherever we need to. There is, of course, an option to, um, you know, to use a shortcut for that. And again, I don't wanna to get too hung up on the shortcuts because the shortcuts for things like snap are going to be used less often when you get started, but as you become more proficient with the modeling, then you'll want to make sure that you get comfortable with these. So if you're keeping a list of shortcut keys and you think that you're gonna use this all the time, you can hit Shift and S on the keyboard. So Shift and S for the snap menu. And you can see here that cursor to active is number three on the keyboard. So you can use that cursor to active option here. So again, there are just a couple ways that we can get to it, but I think the main takeaway or the really important thing that I wanna focus on is the fact that we can change the transform orientation to be local, or we can simply do things like S to scale, Z in the Z direction, and then simply hitting Z again will allow us to get that local coordinate system. So that can be really handy for us especially to speed up the modeling process. All right, so let's review one more time just to make sure that we fully bake this into our brain. So if you wanna use the tools on the left-hand side, things like move, rotate, and scale, they're all located here. If you're in object mode, if you go into edit mode, then you'll have more options. Things like extrude and inset will become available. But in object mode, the tools are the same. If we use these tools to scale, notice that the coordinate system is based on the global. If we set it to local, you can see that it rotates this for us. If we set it to things like normal, it'll be based on our selection. If we set it to gimbal or view or cursor, you can see that it changes on the screen. So as you're learning, this can be pretty helpful. If you set it to view, you're always gonna see X and Y and in, in plane here. So it can be helpful if you like to keep it in that orientation based on your view. For the most part, you're probably gonna stick with global or local. 
So if you like to use the options on the left hand side for scaling, for rotating, and for moving, then you will want to get comfortable with changing the transform orientation from global and local here. If you want to get used to using the shortcut keys, things like S on the keyboard, then make sure you're comfortable and remember that X, Y, and Z will allow you to focus on those specific coordinates. And then if you just simply hit that same coordinate again, it's going to switch it from global to local based on the object you're selecting. So that can really speed up the modeling process. And last, I want to focus on that 3D cursor because it will become important, especially as we begin to apply things like modifiers. Some of the modifiers will be based around that 3D cursor, things like mirror, or if we're deforming something, oftentimes it'll be based around that 3D cursor. So knowing that we can hold down shift and right click, we can place it wherever we want. This can be tricky because as we rotate around, you can see we've moved it off of the Y axis. It's now not in line with Z because we're just simply clicking around in space. So if you want to focus on putting that at a specific location, you can also use view and bring up your sidebar, which is also shortcut key N on the keyboard. And you can go down to the world view. So go down to view and the 3D cursor is going to allow you to manually pick those locations. So if we want to set it to zero in X, for example, when we look at this from Z, you can see now it's completely in line. But you can use these options to manually dictate where that's located and we can reset it back to the world origin if we want to. But remember that we can use Shift and S to open up the Snap menu or we can go to Object, Snap, and we can set it based on our options. So again, selecting our option G and Y, we can move this in Y, or you can use the Move option and simply pick Y, to figure out where you want it. And then with that object selected, we can go to our Snap menu, and we can say Selection to Cursor, and that'll put it back where that 3D cursor is, or we can use other options like Snap, and we can put Cursor to Selected, which will move the 3D cursor to our object, these are going to become important as we get more comfortable modeling. In the next video, we're going to talk more about modifying geometry. We're going to begin creating some new geometry. We're going to talk more about changing the bevel or the crease, some of the implications with that. And we're going to get more comfortable with inserting edges, using the knife tool, and making sure that we're really comfortable dividing and working on a subdivision surface directly here in Blender. So at this point, if you have any questions about anything we talked about in this video or anything else, please let me know in the comments or send me an email, support at caducator.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.